Hello, Hello. my name's Andrew. Um, I'm a potter. I've uh, been a potter, been doing pottery full time for the last 20 odd years. I've been in this workshop for about the last dozen years. Um, see the samples of my work here. Uh, I like the setting here, I like the high roof and natural light. Most of the work I do is on the pottery wheel, but I also do tiles uh, and I do some coil wheel pottery. I specialise in uh, I do a lot of archaeological pottery, uh, medieval, Roman, prehistoric, post-medieval. It's just something which sort of uh, seems to suit the way I work. But I do do my own work as well. Um, a lot of it is orders for uh, specialist reenactment groups, uh, museum education resources, displays in museums, um, film work, uh, well anything really, people coming off the street, I'm not really fussy, wherever, wherever it goes, it, <laughs> I'm not fussy, but that's the type of work I, I do and I specialise in. The Lottery of Sultan project, that was on right up my street, uh, some good illustrations of medieval pottery. Uh, there's a nice one there with um, a woman with a big green glazed pitcher on her head. And there's also one of a, a she uh, farmer, shearer, whatever they're called. And he's got a, a baluster jug um, tied onto his wrist. And that also looks like it's got green glaze and it's got uh, side lines going on. So the object of this project was to try and reconstruct these on the pottery wheel and uh, you can see them being made very very similar to a medieval potter not obviously not exactly the same we've got an electric wheel the clay is dug out the ground by uh, diggers rather than by hand but this actual what you see on the pottery wheel with the potter's hands that's the same the, the uh, handmade pots would have been the same same sort of with a similar lump of clay so the object here really is to try and replicate them as closely as possible. I've sort of made the shapes in my mind, but they don't always come out the right shape or size the first time you do it. You need to pra practice a bit. So I'm just using the electric wheel to centre the clay. This is a uh, advantage I've got over a, uh, a medieval potter when it would have to kick a big sort of cartwheel or stone wheel or whatever it's probably set into the ground to uh, to get the momentum going I can just switch the thing on on the wall so that's quite good it probably speeds it up a bit I don't know <coughs> now you do really have to make sure that you've got the lump of clay centered properly otherwise the pot won't work Quite there. Right, now that feels about central to me. Now, this is going to be a big jug. Uh, what I'm doing at the moment is just going down to the bottom and forming the base. And use your, you use your um, sort of three fingers just to go across the bottom. Right, here we go then. Right, you can see we've got an air bubble in there, which I'm just going to get rid of. The air bubbles um, make the pot go off centre, so it's a bit of a nuisance. As a pot gets bigger, you um, you slowly slow down the speed of the wheel. I mean, I do that with a foot control. I'm hardly thinking about it. Right, that's that. You've got to give some thought to the lip of the pot, uh, otherwise you run out of clay. So um, there are lots of different lips, 
I think we'll go for something like that. It's difficult to tell from the illustration exactly how little it was, but I think that looks about that. Well, I think I'll probably leave the frame lines in this because uh, it's all right. I'm going to cheat a bit here. I'm going to use a bat and just take it off the wheel like that. 